Okay, welcome back to another episode of the Shed Geek Podcast, and this is a first for us today. We're doing a podcast with the boom mics hooked to a shed, so I'm excited already. You guys want to introduce yourself a little bit about who you are, your business, and what you guys do. John Newcomb. Uh, We're in Cadillac, Michigan. We are a small um, family-owned shed building, delivering, moving operation. A little bit of everything. Everything. Yeah. Who's this with you? Is this, this like is my your beautiful wife, Jennifer? Okay. Hi. And Jennifer is the uh, brains behind the operation here. Is that is that what goes on, John? A lot of brains behind it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good. Me and you have yeah. some things in common, right? Like that. You know, we got some decent backup help. So we got a chance to meet while we were in Greenville, uh, and that was really cool. And uh, coming through Michigan, it's like, hey. Let's swing in and stop and talk about sheds. And the next thing you know, we've got like a group of guys coming out tonight and hanging out. And we've spent all day here with you, listening to the nail guns popping, the the, the saws screeching, and just uh, everybody's been at work the whole time while we've been carrying on about our day. But had a chance to go out with you guys last night and learn more about your business. And just kind of curious, your thoughts on how'd you get started? How'd you get here? In the shed industry. We stumbled into the shed industry just before COVID. Um, we found a need for storage at, at, a, at some of our rental houses. And I knew nothing of storage. I knew nothing of off-site storage. Just learned quickly that people were paying a lot of money for off-site storage. I asked a couple of our tenants if they would pay similar price if we brought it to their home. And... That's where at home storage comes from at home storage, which yes. is, yeah, the name yes. of the company. And that, that was the idea behind it. Mm-hmm. Correct. But we kind of talked about how that sort of competes in a very cool way with like folks who think about traditional storage, mm-hmm. you know, it's not so much competing with the shed industry is kind of competing with traditional storage. Right. Correct. Like people don't know they can go up. Oh, well, pe- people do, but not everybody knows you can just get a shed delivered to your to your house and especially in the more metropolitan areas they think of oh no we got to go down to the storage unit right Right. there's a there's a big education to the to two sheds and and now more and more it's bigger and bigger sheds too so yeah well you're doing a 32 foot here behind us yes yeah so i mean and i think in texas they get them 60 foot anymore it sounds like so it's pretty amazing yeah but you guys are located, so we're in Cadillac, Michigan, so you're close to the lake, and you're in the upper, lower peninsula. You're kind of, you know, in that northwest region. Um, Jennifer, what's it been like so far? What's, like, your experience of, like, introduction into the shed industry? Um, I really like it. I like having new customers every day sometimes, um, having the creativity on each shed. There's a lot of customization that we put into them. So it's, it's fun to see what people want and what people need. It's all different. I really like the community that um, shed builders make. Um, I've, John's gotten onto a lot of their Facebook, their um, online communities, and I just love the way they come together to help um, through tornadoes or um, natural disasters that we've seen really is a good sense of community in the industry and i think a lot of people are trying to continue to build that uh makes for a better showing for all of our products you know even if someone else is uh getting a sale down the road you're able to you know it helps your product with whenever they have a good positive experience and that's kind of goes back to you know rising tide lifts all boats mentality that we took on from the beginning so um what's been What's been surprising? Well, actually, let's do this. What was your history before getting into sheds? Were you in construction at all? We we built custom homes. Okay. Uh, uh, our smallest home was over four thousand square feet. So oh wow! We didn't build little houses. They were okay. And now we build a lot of, like behind me, tiny houses. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, you'll do full finished out. Full finish tiny homes yep. and things like that and you were talking about how there are pockets of um less restrictive 
municipalities that will allow for things like that. Correct. In yeah. this area, so it works out yeah. really good. Yeah. Yeah, we also did um, remodeling. We'd take ugly houses and make them beautiful again. Hey, there you go. Yeah, so we loved um, taking that real ugly house that had a hard time finding a buyer and turning it into something that somebody loves as their own home. So how long have you guys been at it construction-wise? Better than 20 years. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And you guys, uh, we were talking last night, you guys are, uh, I guess, kind of Cadillac natives at this point, right? But definitely Michigan yeah. natives. And, yeah. Yeah. So what's, it, what's, the, what's the ride been like so far? What's sort of like, what surprised you? What gives you hope for the future in the shed industry? The, the customer ac- acquisition time, I, I really love compared to building homes. Um, I can spend 15 minutes with a customer. I can show them our color chart. I figure out what size they want. We're done until I deliver the building. And 99.9% of all customers love the building, and, and we're done. If you build a home for somebody, you're with them for a year and a half to two years, and they change their mind every single day. And then they change it back to the other way next week. So, so cost to acquire customers yeah. is considerably lower yeah. than the home building business. A lot of guys have reached out that's been in the home building side and, and said, hey, you know, listen to the podcast. I think it's a good time to get into sheds. It seems like it's a very profitable, very opportunistic industry. What can you tell me about it? Um, did you feel like you were met with any help whenever you guys jumped in? We, we learned a lot of lessons on our own. Um, I, I joined all of the, the Facebook groups, and, and I, I would spend hours reading, and, and Jennifer's always asking me, what are you doing? I said, I'm reading. <laughs> you know, she's always like, why are you on your phone? I'm reading. You know, and, and just other, so many people in the community share their experience, and, and that's been very valuable. And we all have a different way of doing things, but ultimately we sell storage. And, or we deliver storage and um, and and he listens to your podcast and yeah yeah it was it's it's always so humbling to hear somebody say hey we listen to your podcast or or most episodes or you know what I mean uh, some episodes are really for us some might not be but you know we really enjoy some of the guests and again that builds community so that really blesses me and you know and humbles me to hear to hear that and uh, that's why I think it's just really important you know, for those who are on the fence about, you know, doing an episode, I always tell people, Hey, we do our best to make you feel welcome. And it's, it's really, it's not about making you the hero. Like we would joke early on about, uh, shed celebrities and things like it's always <laughs> funny. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it's good puns, but the, the reality is the, the customer's the hero in the process. And uh, I always tell people take, you know, from these episodes, it's free, content creation, YouTube creation, you know, Facebook, social media creation for your your own social presences and, and use that. The shed industry is comprised of a diverse group of companies, but also a diverse group of shed sellers. Proven sales processes are the backbone of successful businesses and their effectiveness cannot be overstated. At Shed U, our processes provide a structured framework that guides the shed sales professional through the various stages of the sales cycle, ensuring consistency and efficiency. By following a proven process, shed salespeople can better understand their customers' needs, build trust, and tailor their approach accordingly. Additionally, these processes are developed based on years of experience and extensive market research, incorporating best practices and strategies that have yielded positive results. Your shed education from Shed University will not only minimize guesswork, but also maximize the chances of closing deals and achieving sales targets. Our proven shed sales process will empower you or your shed sales team to work smarter, not harder, and lead to increased productivity, customer satisfaction, and business growth. It's time to take the guesswork out of your shed sales process. Invest in yourself and your team when you attend class at Shed University. Don't be tardy. Book your ticket now at sheduniversity.com for this year's session on January 23rd and 24th, 
at the Knoxville Convention Center just before the GSCB show at Shedd University. Class is now in session. Uh, I always like to find out, you know, and, and I'm, I'll ask you guys, what's your customer philosophy? Like if, if a customer happened up on your website or your social media feed or something, and they said, we want to know about at-home storage, what do you want them to know? What's your philosophy for your customers? Um, at first, we'll, we'll just listen. What are you looking for? What do you need? And that's our philosophy. That's what we have written on our board in our office. Find out what the customer needs and try to provide that for them. You could say, this is the product I've got. This is what it is. Take it or leave it. But the customizations that are available in the shed industry, you know, are are pretty wide range. Um, What's some of the different things that you guys have seen or requests that you've had in searching for customers' needs? Um, Location. uh, We've... I mean, we're not in a mountainy area. I see some people have to deliver sheds into cliff sides, but yeah. I put sheds into some really tight places, and and me and my son will go on deliveries, and and I'll I'll pre-price it, and they lie to me. So, <laughs> As and, a customer and, and would, we, we might be there for six hours and and make you know, 50 cents an hour by the time it's done, but we still do it. We still, that's, get it. Done. I, I gave my price, that's it. We stick to it. Do you guys run into many, uh, like, pads up here, you know, or do you suggest pads or anything like that? Um, very few pads, very few pads. We place all of our buildings on 4x8x16 um, by by solid block. Um, I started doing that shortly after we got into the into building sheds i find it holds the building a lot better and um, i prefer a pad but very few pads can you remember your first delivery yes how did that go it went well we had a deck over trailer with a double pulley system and pipes it was me my brother and my son now just to be clear this isn't 1980 no no this This was, was 2019. 2019. Okay. Yeah. 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 We know nothing of the shed industry. We, we didn't know there were shed trailers. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, me, my son, and my brother delivered this building, and the guy had a gravel pad surrounded by railroad ties, and there was about a two clip, two foot cliff on the backside. We pulled that shed off, and it was rolling, and it landed. Perfect. And the guy said, wow, you guys are pretty good at this. You really know what you're doing, don't you? <laughs> and my brother said, it's our first one. <laughs> it was, yeah. So he was impressed. He, he was, was like, yeah, impressed. these guys. He's, and he was a repeat buyer. He's bought two, two buildings from us. Nice. That's yeah. always strange whenever I hear that. But, I mean, like, got to remember sometimes we are selling storage. Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of people that likes to store a lot of things and that that really is what it is at the end but it's kind of crossing over into like what we were talking about you know you can make these things into offices home offices studios you know uh music studios yoga studios you're seeing just a lot of different needs for sheds but i mean you're even seeing people that's using them as you know cabins lakeside cabins and mm-hmm. uh you know potential second homes a little home away from home what's some of the strangest orders you guys have gotten in since 2019 well, we've Different. done we've done yoga studios, we've done home offices, um, we've done hunting camps, um, we've done we've done uh, Michigan allows uh, marijuana. We've done a lot of marijuana. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. So then there's probably um, like the state uh, or even a private person buying something for yeah yeah uh, like a store or something um, like that. Grow operations. Just in their okay. Backyard. So yeah. yeah. So more agriculturally related wow no idea i had no i never thought i would hear that you know in the shed industry so it's kind of surprising yeah you know that you can provide a shed for something like that so what's been your what's been your favorite customer experience over these last four years what's something that you look back on you're proud that you got into and it was just a good moment for for you as a business with a customer um there's a small community um about 30 miles south of here and I, 
I know we're providing the only home that they can afford. Um, and, and I think we've, we've sold six in this area because one person seen what we offered. And, and after three buildings after this, I'm going to another location on that road for another person. It's like, so I'll have eight buildings in this whole, I'm building a subdivision of tiny houses and, mm-hmm. and, uh, that's cool. We, we have one lady who has, she's, she's been our ambassador to these tiny homes and she keeps bringing us customers. Yeah, so, very nice. I mean, right. It's, it's only well, eight. You do a good it's job. A, it's only eight, but I mean, for me to build eight homes before that, that was eight years. It's still pretty rewarding yeah. to be able to, you know, uh, get somebody in affordable housing on, yeah. on something like that. Uh, likewise, I'm sure you've had a bad customer experience. We've had a couple. Yeah. We've How do you overcome those? What, what's um, some of those? I've gone to, to do some retrievals and people tell me they're ready. It's empty. And I've gotten there and, uh, they fenced around the building and there's two goats running around loose attached to the fence to the building. And, and I, I made a decision. There was enough fencing there. I'm going to fence these goats off and we're getting the building. Yeah. Um, uh, we found a dead pig in a building mm. once and, uh, had burrowed through the floor and was in the floor joist. Oh, wow. And, um, I sold the building to one of my guys, for a, about a fifteen hundred dollar loss, but I didn't have to touch it. He yeah. he bought the building, and I said, "We don't have to touch it; it's gone." So. Yeah, have you have you been surprised at how RTO is such a big part of the industry, or do you feel that way up north that it is? Or uh, I know we talk about it on the show; it seems more prevalent in the south, but it's pretty big up here. Yeah. Um, I, it seems like I'll I'll get four cr- contracts in a row, and then I'll get six cash buyers. You know, um, so it, everybody needs storage, and and it's it, it may not be the the best way to go with the RTO, but it's the it's an affordable way for for a lot of customers. Yeah, it brings a, an opportunity that otherwise wouldn't be there. Yeah, and it's yeah. really trying to like understand that whole process. So you guys are like four years in. You've been to some of the trade shows and things like that. Have you uh, explored more to? to continue to learn more about the industry and how it works and yeah well i can go through the all of the exhibits at the shed show in about a half hour walking around and and then i'll come back and and jennifer's at the still at the first booth so. yeah. <laughs> she's so she's two playing days was not enough for her. she's playing coy here today is she not because yes. i'm like i know she talks way oh, more yeah. Yeah. Than, than normal and I, that's yeah. not a criticism by yeah. any means i love it I mean yeah. me and you like filled all the space last night and dinner if there was an open right. one right so yeah. Yeah. what what do you what what's your takeaway from it jennifer like what whenever you wake up each day and you're like hey we jumped into the shed business what the heck i we do? really like it i do i i my dad was a builder I've always enjoyed being around building and no, we're not building huge homes and beautiful, big, beautiful homes anymore, but we're building tiny little homes or tiny little sheds and and they're so useful to people that um, I feel like we're, we're um, providing a need, filling a need for people. And, and that's what you'd want to do as, as a, in your workplace. I think a lot of people would, I do. Looking to grow your shed business this year? Say goodbye to the struggle of day-to-day management. ShedSuite has you covered. With ShedSuite, you'll get access to a full e-commerce suite for your shed business. That includes customizable dealer websites, real-time inventory management, streamlined quote and order flow, and robust analytics and reporting. What's more, ShedSuite was designed specifically for shed manufacturers and dealers by experienced shed builders just like you. With low-cost merchant accounts and integrated payments, Shed Suite makes selling sheds a total breeze. Ready to get started? Our team is excited to help you grow your shed business through 2023 and beyond. If you're looking to scale up and automate your shed business, book a demo now at ShedSuite.com. 
Are you coming to this year's Shed Builder Expo at the Knoxville Convention Center on September 27th and 28th? If so, be sure to stop by the Shed Suite booth and meet our friendly team and get an in-person demo of the Shed Suite platform. And don't forget to enter to win some incredible giveaways. We'll see you there. What's some helpful advice you guys wish you could have got whenever you first started, like year one? Get a shed trailer so you don't have to go to the chiropractor every week. Yeah, no <laughs> yeah. doubt. Yeah. Um, um, I wish I had more education on RTO. We we did our own RTO, and um, our first our first uh, guy that we we dealt with with RTO, he told me I was the nicest person in the shed industry because because <laughs> we were we were basically giving. Rates much better than a perfect credit score at the bank. Yeah, I, I was happy getting a a small return on yeah. our investment. Yeah, yeah. So definitely training, learning there. Yeah. Um, you guys have probably heard of the NBSRA, National yeah. Barn Storage Rental Association. Certainly look into those guys because there's there's really good information there on their website and things like that. And I think the shed industry's tried to always um internally add value with programs and services like that so it's always good for you know new folks getting into the shed industry to learn more and it's it's a resource to kind Mm -hmm. of to kind of explore um yeah that's and then a trailer no doubt yeah. Right. right. I mean, just the equipment to, to move it. Did you guys end up buying new or did you find something used? No, we or? bought a used, used yeah. Pine Hill we trailer. Ended up driving to Washington. Where was Pennsylvania. It? Pennsylvania. 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 Right from Pine Hill. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So they had like a used one in you. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You're able to, yeah, it's pretty cool how it's worked out. So were you pretty confident with it as soon as you got it? Like, no, no not at all. <laughs> not at all. Um, Ruben was our sales salesman. Uh-huh. And, uh, I had no idea Ruben is Amish. Um, because no I, idea, no idea. I talked to him on the phone again. I know nothing of the shed industry at this right, time. Yeah. I'm talking to him on the phone. He sent me pictures through email. Um, our Amish communities around the greater Cadillac area do not email, nor do they Use really them. talk on the phone. <laughs> so that was, it was, uh, Surprise when you got Surprise, there, yeah. but you were happy with the decision ultimately. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. I'm, I'm sure Ruben is notorious for doing a great job. And yes, uh, I posted on, on the shed haulers page again, I, I had just joined these page, the, all the Facebook groups. And, uh, I asked if Pine Hill was a good trailer and of course they're a really good trailer. Now I, I know that now, but I said, I'm, I'm going to travel to Pennsylvania to pick up a, a used trailer. And multiple people told me Pine Hill doesn't have any trailers for sale. I said, well, I made a deal. I, they do have a trailer for sale. Because apparently at that time, a, a used trailer was was a real hot commodity. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh, especially during that time, I'm sure. So there we go. I, we're not even charging Pine Hill for all that plug. Right. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, you're good. You're good. I'm just teasing. Yeah. No, they are, are good folks over there. And uh, I, that's really the beauty of the shed industry is a lot of people do promote uh, multiple, even competitors, you know, are, are really good about competing multiple services. I always think that's the best way to do it is maintain a positive outlook on, on how things are going no matter what. So uh, do your best to. To do that, so then, uh, did you end up getting like more equipment, or? Yeah, we uh, we've traveled this countryside for the shed industry, going to the to the expos. Um, yeah, but we drove to New York to buy a a turbo mover, and um, they're very dangerous, if you ask me. <laughs> okay, but it, we always make an experience whenever we travel somewhere. We usually bring the kids and um, we we make it a trip. So that's probably the most surprised as we were. Well, last night we were eating and you guys were telling me like your family history and things like that. And I uh, come in here this morning and we're in Cadillac. Now I live in Metropolis and you're telling me, yeah, we stopped by the Superman statue and got a picture whenever we was there. And I always think that's funny because we see people around it every day, all day. Yeah. But you never know where they're from. Yeah. But then on top of that, I come in this morning and I see a St. Louis Cardinals mug sitting there. And I'm like, 
who's a Cardinals fan because they're genius, whoever it is, first of all, okay. <laughs> even though we're having a terrible year and the Braves are doing amazing. Um, it, you, you know, and you said, yeah, our, our daughter lives there and used to live in Marion, Illinois. And I'm like, get out of here. Like, it's like 40 minutes away from me. Yeah. Right. And uh, it's, it's such a small world. And then we start connecting shed industry related people through that. It's just networking, man. It works right. really good whenever you have those conversations and open up to to that opportunity. So, yeah, yeah. what's uh, what's been your favorite thing so far, Jennifer? What's been like? You know, I, I'm I'm bugging John for his. <laughs> I'm curious. Um, what is uh, a moment that you're like, hey, I'm glad that we decided to get into this industry? Is it the travel? Um, I do like that. Um, I also like that the kids can be here. They can be with us while we're working. They get to see what we do, ins and outs of it all. We've got, got Quinlan sitting next to us right now. Um, and that's, that's really important to us, to have our kids around what we're doing. We're not working somewhere where we can't have them and raise them yeah. every day. So. And, that's, and that's important because you guys have a couple kids. Seven kids, yeah. yeah. So <laughs> makes sense to have them yeah. around. Uh, I think Henry talked about that, you know, with, uh, you know, a little farther south uh, from here when we interviewed Joe and he talked about it was really, he was building homes and it was really cool to kind of be able to do something stationary where the kids could be around, yeah. keep an eye on them. And uh, your work was here. Yep. Right. You didn't have to go out to a new location all the time. And right. that makes it very difficult. Right. Um Sales. I'm curious about sales and sales approach. What have you guys seen? Uh, we kind of discussed rent tone, but like what, what else do you guys feel like is something that shocked you or how'd you feel about the sales process? Well, part of our sales process is posting on marketplace. Yeah. And when you, when we saw our pictures on somebody else's posts for sale at one point, that kind of shocked us. Oh, so. Somebody had taken our pictures and posted an ad as if they're selling them. Oh, wow. So John yeah. called them right up and said, you've got my pictures on your website. And they said, oh, sorry, we have so many pictures we go through. That, oh, uh, gotcha. We accidentally yeah. put yours on, and but they took it down. It's an interesting thing, Marketplace. Uh, yeah. how, how have you found the customers through Facebook? They find us. Yeah? They yeah. find us. We just put an ad up there. Um I don't know exactly exactly what you've done for promotion. I work. answer a hundred people a day. Yeah, hey, yeah that's I what I was wondering. I'm assuming. Yeah. 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 Um, and when the older the older group of buyers want want to come and see a physical building, and um, I keep all of our ads up for buildings that we sold a year ago, you know. But I I tell them we may not have that exact building here. And, but you're welcome to come to our shop and look and see our construction and we can talk, we can show you colors, sizes. We'll, we always try to keep a small variety. You see what we have here, very few. Um, most, we don't build it to have an inventory. We sell it and then we, we build it. So, yeah. Um, a lot, the same way that a lot of companies do, or even the way that a lot of companies have started out, you know, yeah. is really just, you know, do you, do you have ambitions, though, to be vertically integrated, to kind of, like, grow, to expand? What's sort of your, your, your thoughts there? I've been noticing, like, a lot of the mom-and-pop places are just kind of proud to be there, and they're happy to be, you know, hey, we, we, we take care of our, our, our family through this. And we, you know, we serve our community. We're kind of satisfied there without having to go on and take on the whole world. Yeah, that's a challenge. Um, I'm a... I'm really against debt, so um, for us to grow to to have expansive lots and, and a bigger facility will will require some debt, and we're both. We need some guys like you in our government. Yeah. We do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Well, we, we are agree. we are now part of our local fair board that we were just put into couple weeks ago and just in in small town politics i i i tell them you can't run things like this yeah you don't run it like a business this isn't working yeah 
staying debt free just allows for growth to, to, to do more. Now you guys don't have like a dealer like uh model where you put a whole bunch of sheds out in different locations, but you know, is it on the table in the future to want to do something like that? Possibly. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's not off the table. Right. Um, we, uh, we keep pretty busy where we're at. Um, we don't want to grow faster than we know we can take care of our customers right. and our business. It's terribly important to grow in a healthy, in a healthy way. In a healthy way. Yeah. Yes. The, the biggest problem they had seemed like during COVID was, you know, couldn't find labor because there was such a demand for sheds. There was a lot of guys saying that they were struggling with that. Maybe not everybody, but there was mm-hmm. there was a lot. Um, where do you feel like the shed industry is going? I mean, you jumped into this industry, so do you feel good about it? Do you feel like it's got a lot of life? I, I do. Sorry. Like oh, you're all. good. <laughs> it just scared me. Yeah, I'm sorry. not going to lie. I thought I was hit. I think it'll turn off. I was like, they, fi- they finally got me. Okay. Quinlan got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it makes for it makes for good uh, authenticity. Right. That's the way a, a, a barn builder should have yeah. is yeah. airs going off. So uh, that's good. Yeah. That. What what your projection like? Um, I reach I reach people every single day that are interested in in buying sheds. Um, some weeks we'll we'll sell ten sheds a week, which which I know isn't a lot for. Or bigger operations, but ten sheds for us is a lot, and that's that'll put us back a couple of weeks. Yeah, and it's week in, week out. We we do that. I have an old friend. Um, he always thinks we're crazy in all of our ventures, <laughs> but he we're we're kind of entertainment for him. And uh, <laughs> he said, "I keep seeing these shed lots everywhere," and and I tell him his name is Dave. I said. Dave, they've, they've always been there. You just now notice them because we sell sheds. And, yeah. yeah. Well, that's very. That's actually very common. I think that's probably more than people realize. Well, you know, what's that? You know, I don't remember what the effect is, but when you buy something, you see it everywhere all of a sudden. Right. Yes. Right. And that's yeah. probably the case, him being around you so much. All of a sudden, he's so much more aware yeah. uh, of just exactly what there is in the community. Do you have this competition fierce in your area, or do you feel like, no, no. I yeah. feel, I feel our competition is the. Uh, they have a different business model. They, they fill unmanned lots with fifty buildings and what I'll call the hope to sell buildings. I know they sell a lot of buildings, but they also have a lot of money invested in inventory that's just sitting. And you, you that's think that's not an approach we'll go with? Yeah, you think having the salesperson talking to the customer, speaking to the customer. In other words, I've heard people say they sell themselves, but you wouldn't agree with that. You would say we sell them. I I sell myself. Yeah. If I if a customer comes in front of me, if I can if I can meet the customer, I sell the building. Yeah. I'm I'm not saying that I'm a great salesman. Yeah. But maybe better I, than you realize. Maybe. And yeah. and some of that's just from authenticity and just being real. I think a lot of people can pick up on that through a sales process and really i don't know there's training sales processes but then there's like people that are also successful without having to go down that route i mean i'm a fan of coaching but there's some people i see that are very successful and and happy and content's probably the better word content with what they're doing without having to to do those things Hey guys, this is The Shed Geek, and I'm here to tell you about the latest in financial innovation to hit the shed industry. It's a program called Backyard Finance. Everywhere I go, shed manufacturers and shed sellers are always asking, how can I get a better payment option for my customer? At Backyard Finance, they're making this a reality. You might be asking, how do I sign up? Simple, just go to Backyard Finance, click on the Get Started Now button, and create an account. After that, you'll have 200 plus banks competing to give your customer the best financial terms possible. With Backyard Finance, you can service your customers two ways, direct to customer lending or direct to merchant lending. With direct to merchant lending, simply fill out an application. It takes about two to four weeks to process that application, but it'll allow you a variety of financing options to make you a more competitive retailer. With FICO scores as low as 500, 600, or 700 plus, your customers will receive financing options 
with APRs as low as 2.99% or as high as 29.99%. Credit applications are approved in just 15 to 45 seconds. To know more, contact Backyard Finance at 833-692-2286 or email info at backyardfinance.com today. Backyard Finance, funding backyard dreams. What do you guys feel like uh, you'll see in the next year, the shed industry for, for at-home storage? What do you think? Just uh, hammer down on what you're doing, build more tiny homes, expand into that area more? Um, it seems, it seems to be a big, um, demand for the tiny homes. Um, just this week, uh, one that we have to, to build coming up, I have, it's going into a, uh, a little more strict, uh, zoning area. And, um, as a licensed builder, I know code and we have to follow a little more to code, um, and, but the building inspector's letting us do it. It's, I, I think they're, I think they're accepting that more and more people need the need for housing. And yeah. if we do it right, um, I don't know. I know some people have the uh, manufacturer housing credentials. Um, talking to our local inspectors in the three counties around us. Um, I think if I follow building code, they're going to let us do more and more. So, so do it the right way. Do it the yeah. right way, yeah. With the housing crisis, I think there's that flexibility with them. Do you see that more? Do you feel like you see that more in Michigan? Do you think it's territorial? Uh, I was reading something not long ago about uh, sort of like a, a smaller house movement in and around Michigan and probably more in the urban areas like Detroit and, you know, Flint and things like that, but... Um, I actually remember reading an article where they've been building, you know, tiny house communities or small house communities yeah. in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think it, it could be just a younger generation not needing as much to store, more interested in just getting out and getting experiences, not sitting at home and having everything in a house. So I think there's a lot of that, um, knowing my kids, uh, 24, 21, who are in that same generational mindset. Yeah, no, I, I, I agree. I think uh, we are seeing more of like a change of, well, we see that from the shopping process too. Mm-hmm. Like we, we definitely see the way that people prefer to shop now mm-hmm. versus the way they did 10 years ago or 20 years ago. So it's um you have to change with the times or roll with the punches so to speak and uh figure that out or or hire that out or whatever that whatever that's going to look like yeah you know you've got to try to find a way to uh, there is a certain amount of progressiveness that makes sense that you have to go along with progress i say the opposite of pro is con so if it's progress then i guess that means congress is the, oh yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> right. i guess that, that goes. they must be the opposite of progress right Uh-oh. right so um yeah really really nice to meet you guys any shout outs in particular people that you met along the way that's kind of helped you or just uh been a good experience in the in the industry well not long ago you interviewed uh tim and patty um Debach. Debach. Yeah. They're down in Kentucky. Yeah. We met them last year at the Shed Show. and um, Very down to earth. Very do- friendly. Very good people. And, yeah. and uh, the way Tim describes how he has people do things, I, I've, I've come to adapt some of that. That only happens through networking, though. Right. Yeah. That only happens by having a conversation. I don't really feel like there's... You know, it's amazing to me to think, you know, for people to be like, oh, hold all of my secrets tight to my chest. And I'm like, well, there's, there's very little secrets, really, to me when it comes down to it. And I think if we can overcome that, like sort of like that ever looming thought of the industry, I think it really just helps us to get better. You talking with Tim and Patty, who I agree, absolutely awesome, right. awesome people, um, good I'd, people. I'd say Durrell as well, who got us some. Um who came up here, got us into RTOs, and um, we were stopped at that point. If we hadn't 
learned of RTOs, we were out of capital to continue making our own contracts. Mm. So that right. that helped us continue. Yeah. 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 Dur- Durrell, who, who no longer is with the large RTO company, um, and Dennis Fisher. Um, Dennis came to visit us. I need my little. And he sweats a lot, too. So <laughs> <laughs> He is going to laugh at that. I yeah. promise you. He's going to appreciate he's, that. He's come to visit so us much. when it's very hot. And it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I love it. That's that's hilarious. So, I, mean, I had uh, Dennis was coming through our town a few weeks back, and we got to me and my wife got to sit down with him and his wife, and just uh, it was a good time. And I think we both sweat a lot. So yeah. <laughs> he he's very genuine. He he is very genuine, and it's um, nice to meet those kind of yeah. people throughout the whole industry. We, yeah. you see a lot of that. Yeah, great guy. I, I always said he, you know, he done a lot for whenever I got started and, and, and learning and he's really got some some um, RTO knowledge it goes beyond even just sheds and, and that kind of showed up and yeah genuine guy you know what I mean like we we've definitely talked about you know different family related things and all that so yeah we're getting we're, uh, good shout out to RTO National we're giving you guys we're, we're just giving everybody you know yeah. what RTO National advertises with me so I love giving them shout outs it, it works out good. perfect they're they've been really good to us um, over there and really a top-notch company so yeah i mean those those people and those networking opportunities have have been good you guys go into um so we've got the shed expo coming up at knoxville Con- convention center next month this this might be aired even after that's i'm not sure if this would be out before then or after but then we've got the garage shed carport builder trade show in uh, the same location at the knoxville convention center in january uh, are you uh, are you guys uh, going to try to attend or see see what you can go to and right. yeah. network some more? We we haven't we haven't thought of that one. We we'll go to the shed one yeah. in Knoxville. Yeah. We hadn't thought of the carport one, but we learned. I did learn so much. He says he left me in the dust. He was done with the shed show in thirty minutes. Yeah. I do talk <laughs> to people, and I really want to know what their products are and how. I was so excited when we came back. And um, I, I excited with all the products that are made ex- specifically for sheds. Yeah. So that um, what, let's let's do some shout outs. Why not? Let's do some yeah. let's do some favors. Uh, what's some of the things you took away that you remembered that were really cool? Um, I I am interested in the solar. So there was the sun solar um, booth there, and then the insulation so that okay. um, we can insulate better on these tiny places, and it's not as bulky and heavy so there was there were some nice um insulating i can't tell you the name they sent me a yeah packet in the in the mail yeah. afterwards sure too um and our the siding yeah the, and i still have i haven't purchased the siding but there <laughs> and and i'm sorry um <laughs> but, we you are the nicest name. guy in the shed industry <laughs> aren't you you're there like is, i'm sorry there is a and I have to look through the the flyer to tell you, but it's a they make a, a rolled steel, and it looks like board and batten siding. It, it's beautiful steel, and and you can see we dominantly work with steel for our sheds, and uh, they had and, and it's just beautiful. So yeah, maybe ma- Permagard does that sound it, it familiar? Is, it is Permagard. Yeah. So yes. the guys yes. over, yeah, yes. Luxgard and Permagard. Luxgard, Luxgard Permagard. They're yeah. right next to each other. Yeah. Yes. They do like yeah. the uh, the flooring, and then yeah. yeah. So they 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 have advertised Permagard, but we have done some Luxgard stuff with them, and maybe maybe Cynthia Kaminsky over at Ecoethic Solar. Yes. You might yeah. have been talking about yes. yeah. yeah, spectacular. Her and Chris, they've been on the show and just really cool product. Got a call this morning from somebody that said, hey, you know, can you give me their information and stuff like that do you get a lot of demand for things like that up here like uh you know solar and people yeah. wanting to go off grid and off-grid. Yeah. stuff there's like a lot that. of areas huge. up here yeah. that are not on power grid so yeah to put a shed out into their hunting property or something and they have that um ability to run things yeah outside of the, the the like the guys that do it for hunting do you think it's really just about you know like affordability or freedom or mixture yeah. of the two freedom, freedom uh, I'd say. There's yeah. A, yeah. a lot of freedom um I built. I delivered a building a couple of weeks ago, and um, it was. They had purchased two other cabins from from another manufacturer, and uh, I pulled into the 
quarter mile long driveway and they had it wide enough most of them don't when when i'm going down a quarter mile long driveway my building is rubbing all the way but this one wasn't and and i pulled back in there i was like this is a really nice setup and they've been there for a couple years and completely off grid he told me he he's got a five inch well he can power up as well he's he said i watch tv it's it, he lives just like just like we do. Yeah. Hello, Shed Sellers. Did you catch the latest Real Work Labs interview with George Converse? If not, don't miss this value-packed episode. Head to Shed Geeks Podcast YouTube and search Real Work Labs. George and the Real Work Labs crew are riding the wave of Google's latest updates, taking your digital presence to the next level. We're tech artisans crafting your neighborhood brand voice for shed sellers like you to stand out, gain trust, and get found online. Our software will easily capture your work snapshots, videos, weave your craft's story, and get reviews all in one virtual experience. Our innovation goes beyond getting found for your business location, rather getting found for your work locations. Reviews intertwine with their corresponding job sites. When potential customers seek local expertise, you're the proven solution they'll find. It's high time to map your reviews and showcase your beautiful work in a meaningful way that builds trust in customers' neighborhoods. Ready for the journey? Visit shedgeek.realworklabs.com or call George today at 480-787-7575. Real Work Labs, elevating your trust, increasing your conversions, and getting you found where you work in the neighborhoods you serve one shed at a time. So I'll do a couple, maybe not rapid fire questions, but I'll just have a couple just out of curious, just thoughts here. Uh, Books. Do you guys read any books on construction, sales, delivery process, anything that comes to mind that's helped you be successful that you can add for advice to others who listen in? Okay. I, I read conspiracy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I'm a, I'm a big Glenn, Glenn Beck. Beck follower. You know, it's, yeah. it's funny that, you know, people would call it conspiracy now. It's when not it's really conspiracy just, to me, know? but yeah. some, some people yeah. would say it is. Yeah. I, I do. I do um, buy the um, booklets of tiny house out okay. plans just to get yeah. ideas and just to keep that, um, ability to see what people are asking yeah. for see what they're doing i saw that you got i'm gonna have to look into i, th- I think i saw like a chicken coop like yeah. book in here that you guys had so i'm like yeah. Yeah, yeah. whenever i go around i'm always interested in that and like i said finding out more about brochures it kind of helps me try and perfect my my craft a little bit the best i can so mm-hmm. right, so we got the, the 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 books out of the way uh you guys listen to the podcast. What's been your favorite podcast? What's helped you? I'm, I'm, I'm asking selfishly here. Self prom- <laughs> shameless, selfless promotion. So I'm just curious if any, anything specifically helped you along your journey. Um, I listen to, I like a lot of the marketing ones and the, even though we don't use enough marketing and, and that's our big, that's probably our biggest downfall is, is our, ability to market what we do um, but those that get into the depths of that a little bit more whether yeah. it be you know talking about the specific specifics of google or meta ads mm-hmm. or something like that yeah. or websites and how they formulate sort of your your marketing process and video i can't help but think that video like man we're really doubling down on video and our marketing efforts just because videos yeah. uh, i feel like a way of the future and you're trying to sell a tangible product so you want the customer to be able to see it as much as possible yes. and even amazon has you know struggled to try to get how many times early on did everybody send everything back because it was like this isn't the way the picture looks yeah right so being able to depict you know accurately what a person is selling and mm-hmm. uh so I, I think that's important okay we'll wrap up here uh, I'm going to give you guys something I've never done. So I'm just trying some new stuff. We'll see if it's entertaining and uh, whatever for the audience. Uh, one question for me each. I'll give whatever question you want. Shed related, non-shed related. I want to I wanna just uh, try to maintain my personable approach with my audience. So for that reason, whatever, whatever you got, whatever you're curious about. 
show <laughs> shed related or non shed related or non shed related. Yeah. Um, who who is your inspiration for what you do? Okay, who was my inspiration? So I listened to a lot of podcasting. Um, Dan Bongino, who you probably know. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Um, I listen to a lot of Dan. Uh, there's one called The Communication Guys. I actually didn't listen to Rogan very much. I listened to a lot of Ben Shapiro. Okay. Um, I uh, listened to a lot of sports talk. Okay. Um, early on, I listened to a lot of just talk radio. Back then, it wasn't called podcasting, and it was really just you know, whether it be Rush Limbaugh or Hannity, but I also listen to people who had alternative points of view of my political perspective and things like that. So I always wanted to uh, take a, a, an appropriate approach at both sides of a political thing. And, and polit- politics is kind of what drug me in, but sports was very much part of it too. Um, so I would say the inspiration was like those guys as far as like them – putting something out there that I enjoyed. Um, outside of that, it was literally working in rent to own and I was a relationship builder and I kind of got tired of knocking on doors and either getting turned away or sometimes, you know, brought in, but more than anything, I never had an opportunity to build a relationship. And that's the saddest part is cause I still have friends that I'll never do business with or don't do business with. It's been kind of cool. And you, you know, you, you still learn something from everybody. So when uh, Deanna, my wife, found out that she had cancer, we were really concerned about how we were going to, I traveled. So how am I going to go out and meet people? But then also, how am I going to, you know, support my family at home? Because I needed to be there for her. I really just felt like it was a bit of a divine, you know, message that was like, hey, podcast you listen to podcasts you like podcasts so so add value to people's day yeah. if you'll just not you know just don't be selfish in it just the zig ziglar quote anybody who wants anything you know you can have anything you want if you help others get what they want so I tried i tried just adding value through genuinely being curious about people and sheds in the process and yeah start a podcast right and yeah. it's went well right it's yeah. went well so that's that's the long that's answer great. to your that's question good. that's good yeah yeah and and will you i think we we talked a little bit about it um at dinner of people don't and i've heard other people say they don't know the difference between you know like a ford and a chevy but with which a shed is a shed to so many people out there and and we all do things a little differently aside from just storage and how do you how do you see that we can more i I don't want I don't want to say that we need to come down to three manufacturers across the country. Yeah. But regionally, um I don't know how do we separate? How do we, how do we distinguish, get more, or, distinguish or whatever yeah. like your your brands? Yeah. Yeah, I think I mean I certainly think that the industry's moving in a direction that's probably you know, so you look at second and third generation shed builders and you know, they've just been around for a while. If they don't have someone in the family to take that on, they they're looking to either, you know, move into a different area or retire. Some just want to move into a different area in general because if you run really tight margins, I think they'd probably prefer that someone just handles the, the bigger aspect of that. So I, I can see where larger companies are probably wanting to expand and um, smaller companies are wanting to either maintain their own or, or get out. Uh, we've had several people reach out to us and uh, ask our opinions on, you know, what if we wanted to sell or get out, you know, it had others reach out to us and say, what if we wanted to buy? So, you know, it's, it's kind of uh, it's kind of unique. So I, I don't think you're going to get to two to three companies, but I think you will probably see possibly a larger presence with larger companies mm-hmm. and they're content to grow and uh, just steadfast with the smaller companies that can are able to maintain in their area as long as they can, be competitive. They might not have to have all the services and things like that. As far as shed geek and what I think maybe you were kind of alluding to there in the beginning is how can I add value there? Uh, what I do now is very B2B, but I love the B2C aspect of it and, Mm -hmm. you know, being able to take care of the consumer. Uh, it'd be really awesome just to be able to, um, you know, for shed geek to sort of reach the consumer in some ways and, I'm just really transparent about that. You know, um, 
our income from a year ago doubled. You know what I mean? And and we were doing advertising and, and it doubled. And I was very transparent even a year ago with what I make on the show. And people say, well, you don't have to share that. It's like, well, I had a job at the time. So, yeah. so <laughs> you know, it was a labor of love. When you have yeah. to do it yourself, you have to make it more valuable. Since then, we've we've launched, you know, the marketing campaign. And just because I think we've got value that we can add to people, whether it be B2B or B2C. So, um yeah, who knows where it's going to go? I don't know. I, I, I kind of, obedience is greater than sacrifice, so I kind of try to pray on it until God, like, you know, can you can you make it clear for me what yeah. I'm supposed to do, you know, yeah. in, in each direction? Because that would really help. Right. Um, yeah. but, that would uh, be very nice if yeah. you had that, if Yeah, everybody could just see that. <laughs> I think <laughs> everybody wants that. They want you, clarity, yeah. I, that's it. I pray for clarity. Yeah. Yeah. Most days. Yeah, yeah. You, every day. I really you, sure you walk yeah. by faith and not by sight. So yeah. you know, I think the hardest part is like trying to discern what he's what he's telling you, right? You know, so like I try to I try to listen and not just talk, yeah. and uh, I try to be still and patient and say, you know, where would you want me to go? And I, I do know that if you're authentic and you build trust with people, there's always opportunity. Uh, it's really easy to start chasing the money and the ad yeah. dollars. You know, and uh, I just, I don't know. I just I, I feel really good about me and my wife, who's now beat cancer, you know, and my, my kids are out of the house and they're finding their own life. For me and her to just explore the countryside together and enjoy that. And if that brings, you know, the fruit that it brings as is, is finances, good. And maybe we can be good stewards of that. But uh, I'd rather it bring contentment than anything. So. That's my long answer, and if you guys don't shut me up, I'll keep talking. So some of our answers were a little longer. No, you're good. You're good. Hey, listen, this is it's it's authentic, and I appreciate that. You guys are real people. You're some of the best people that I've met, and um, I I I think you guys are going to have a successful journey through this whole process. I'd encourage you to not get discouraged and and keep networking because to me, networking works. Right. You know, and um, ask any questions you got. I'll be be glad to be a, a helper in any way I can. And if that leads to us in, in, in some kind of business, great. And if it doesn't, I wish you absolute best. And I want to be your friend at a minimum. Yep. Right. So that's, that's, that's the approach that's I take with yeah. everybody. So. Yeah, we've enjoyed hanging out with you, going to dinner. And you guys are really down to earth. <laughs> it's nerve wracking meeting someone who's coming across country that you don't know. And uh, are, you don't know their differences of yeah. where you stand, where they stand, and how you how you meld together. You know, I yeah, I hear what you're saying, and I just kind of you know, I feel like I want to always take the approach to just be yourself. My wife reminds me all the time that you know, you know, just be yourself. That's who God made. You know what I mean? So that's enough. So just just be yourself. And you, although you might not be everybody's cup of tea. Yeah. You know, it's okay because we're not all built to be robots. So right. the differences make us better. Uh, and uh, I learn from even those that might not be my cup of tea. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, we, uh, I, I live by the Dave Ramsey, live like no one else today so you can live like no one else tomorrow. Tomorrow, and, yeah. And I, we don't find many like us. Yeah. It's, it's, it's true. I, and I, aside from the shed industry, I, I can meet. I can meet a hundred people that I can meet. I, we can go to the shed expo and see thousands of people that have the same interest. And the first one I went to it was right here in Michigan, Grand Rapids. And I, I took my son and we were just blown away how many people were here for the shed industry. It was, yeah. it was amazing. We, we, took, we took my mom to the one in uh, Virginia and she was yeah. surprised that it wasn't boring. Yeah. She just thought it would be real yeah. boring, but no. You know, the Apostle Paul said he become all things to all people so he might, you know, reach a few. And, and although I'm probably misquoting that terribly as I often do scripture, <laughs> I think I got the message. And yeah. really, if I, can, uh, if I can do that, that's the approach I take. You guys are easy to get along with, so don't say yourself short. We, we are just as scared that whenever we come in to meet someone that we can find some commonality. And we've just been lucky enough that – the industry's embraced us and given us that opportunity to do that. And um, that's probably what we're going to continue to do until God says move somewhere else. And uh, if that's never, that's fine. And if it's tomorrow, that's fine. But 
we'll give him all the glory for for everything that he's doing for us and has done and um it's not by my works i promise you yep. right it's not by my works if it was left up to myself to save myself i'd fail <laughs> so miserably right. we yeah. each would <laughs> but appreciate you guys such down to earth people you make great sheds this was the first time we got to hook some boom mics to a shed and uh smell the sawdust yeah, while we're sitting say, here so good yeah <laughs> while we're sitting here doing a show i think yeah. you guys are really great i hope somebody listened today and said hey maybe i didn't learn about you know marketing or 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 you know something specifically about you know a jig or, or a way to move a, a mule through you know whether it be a mule or a trailer or sideways wheels we didn't get into the the, the heavy no. discussion right we, we talked about people and that's what the shed right. industry is so I hope someone was blessed by it today. And I hope they, if, if they hear our story and just realize we're kind of content where we're at right now and they're not a huge industry, yeah. like uh, some of the big players, that they know that they're, they're supplying a need yeah. out there mm-hmm. and that they're just as, just as valuable at their size as anyone big at their size is. That's right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Hey, I appreciate you guys' hospitality. Thanks for letting us sleep overnight. Yeah. And crash your parking lot here. That means a lot. So. Sorry, we didn't have the right plug for you. We oh, <laughs> don't worry. We, we ran the generator. We're happy. Yeah. Lucy's happy. That's all that matters. Is yeah. we got we got to we got to take care of our baby, our dog. Yeah. So, no, I, I, it means a lot to you guys to 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 be so down to Thank earth to, as well. So, wish you the absolute best. If you ever got any questions? Holler, and uh, hopefully you get around and see some more people like Tim and Patty at the. Uh, expo this year and and like yeah. you guys yeah, yeah we'll, we'll see network you there. more you there, so. yeah we'll thank see you. you so much for coming up here and spending the time with us and getting to know us i mean we, we are little and uh it's nice to feel valued where you're at yeah, yeah. that's right that's right appreciate it guys